I just pray you'll give us that desire, you'll give us that burden that you have had for these people since you created them, Lord. And I pray that you would just make our paths straight and our roads um, even, Lord, and that we would walk in freedom because we love your precepts. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you have laid before us to be able to take truth uh, to these people here. Father, we again just want to commit this trip to you as we go into the mountains. We know you've already been working, but we are just looking to you, Father, in faith to direct our steps these next few days. I thank you for who you are, and I, I honestly do just want to lift you up tonight and commit our way to you, and I do it in Jesus' name. Yeah, this is the main river that comes down, and uh, uh, but I see those right, right here. And that's, there's about 60 or 70 houses wow. there. That may be something that at least definitely should be in our, our thinking for tomorrow. You need diesel, right? I've got uh, 10 extra gallons. So I've got 38 gallons plus 10. Brett Terry, native Michigander, the administrator. If you had eight children, you would learn to administrate better also. School administrator, Mission Institute chairman, and now realizing the very purpose for which he joined New Tribes Mission. Francisco Valencia, Mexican born with a good command of English and Spanish. The people person. Francisco might not know what time it is, but he will never forget your name. Take a right up here, Harold. Harold Middleton, from the coal regions of Kentucky, the owner of the diesel truck in which we ride. He started his mission career in his late 30s, leaving behind a home and successful job. Linda Steinbacher, the brave woman who voluntarily accompanied six men on this survey. Linda, who can make a tribal lady feel at ease in a matter of minutes and get more pertinent information from that lady than all the rest of us put together. And myself, John Steinbacher, a veteran of more than a dozen surveys and the coordinator of the Durango team. On this trip, we will be traveling nearly 100 miles into Korok territory. The climate will change drastically from 90s and 100s to 40s and 50s. Not many straight streets and roads are enjoyed on this journey. Only minutes into the trip and the curves begin. One such road is called the Devil's Spine. From Durango to the Pacific Coast, someone has counted 1,200 turns. Motion sickness is par for the course, and Dramamine is part of one's diet. This is the Mexico that the tribes call home. 
the Mexico that tests the fortitude of animals, vehicles, and people. If you were going to color a spring, you would not drop dye into the fringe of the spring where it would run away and never color the spring. So it is with the gospel. Dropped into the middle of a population group, it has the opportunity to flow out to the rest of the people. We are stopping in the village of Presidio, some 30 miles from Ruiz, to pick up a Cora believer whose name is Hilario. Since none of us knows the Cora language or traditions, Hilario will be a great asset to us on this trip. Hilario wants us to see another Cora village close to his own. A half hour walk and a treacherous river crossing lie between us and that village. First time I haven't worn my hiking boots on a survey. <laughs> the trek is done in near 100 degree heat and humidity. We now find ourselves faced with a wide, deep river that can only be crossed by a dugout canoe. We've been told by Hilario that not too many years ago, no stranger was allowed to cross the river and enter into this village. What will be the reception? Will they be friendly? Will they be cold? And what will be their understanding of our actual purpose? It is always necessary for us to seek out the leadership of the village. In that way, we can gain permission to stay there in the village to speak to the people, to see what the atmosphere will really be like, whether it will be friendly or cold. While we're talking to the president, or I should say, Hilario is talking to the president, and we are all listening to his translation to us, my wife Linda is off talking to one of the wives of one of the men there in someone's home. And we have found that uh, one of the reasons that we really like to take our wives along is that women are freer to speak than men. Men become more reserved, more cautious, for whatever reason, and we glean much less from the men than we do from the ladies.
we're sitting around discussing what our future plans are and then what we've actually seen here in this village. And in essence, we're moving toward determining that because of Eladio's presence, he being a believer, there are a few other believers in Presidio, because of his presence and the location of this village close to his village, we determined that really we think the Lord would not have us even consider this village, but have us move deeper into Kota territory, into a different dialect, and consider what the Lord would have for us in another area. I broke my back about 17 years ago, so just sitting and bouncing up and down while sitting in the back of the truck aggravates it pretty well, so I've been stretched out in the back in the bed under the cap, and that's a little more comfortable, so I'm feeling a lot better now than I was a couple hours ago. Have you ever tried three? Mm -hmm. Well, stay away from us. Yeah. Kind of breezy up here. Oh, I was going to say, why is the water running around? <laughs> oh, it's got me good. Mm. What do you want, John? Do you want tuna? Hey, you want or do you want sandwich? peanut butter and butter? This is good. Yeah, okay. I'll eat. Uh, I brought one too. Wow. It's uh, the altitude, altitude. Mm -hmm. pressured them up. Yeah, We're about yeah, two or three yeah. hours out <laughs> of out. Uh, Linda Vista, where we actually are considering placing a couple if we can get permission to put, put a team in there. And right now, this is our first real break from 90 to 100 degrees and 90% humidity. I don't know exactly what the temperature is here, but it's probably in the 70s and the humidity's way, way down and we're extremely comfortable sitting here eating our lunch. This place that we're headed to, Linda Vista, we visited back in March several months ago and really just like the looks of it and so we're hoping today that as we go in that there's a nice response from the folks. We didn't really stop and chat with a lot of the local people when we went through last time so we'd like to It'd be great if the Lord allowed us to have a real good rapport right off with the folks as we talk to them. It's not really scary, it's just uh, a lot of things are going through my mind in regards to that. Uh, how effective will we be and uh, how God is going to use our team of two other or three families total uh, in, this, in these mountains. This is exciting because um, this meeting that we're going to have or this trip that we're making, we, we're praying that, that we can meet some people that uh, uh, will invite us and will like us and we can like them as friends and uh, eventually uh, ask them the important question, uh, would you like us to come in and uh, live among you and help you and learn your language and your culture and, and uh, befriend you.